It's update for October 7, 2023, day 591 of the war and of the date update. Also catch up for October 6 and 5. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, general strategic developments and as always then I'm going to switch to the situation on the battleground. Uh, first, uh, in terms of strategic developments, I cannot uh, uh, avoid talking about the uh, um, Israeli-Palestinian uh, war. Um, the only uh, I would like to mention this in the context that uh, this um, attack was obviously carefully planned and so on. Uh, there is a state actor behind it, and this is not obviously Palestinian state. Uh, there is some large uh, country. All countries um, are behind this. There is no doubt about that. Uh, it just uh, the let's say the level of the attack, the quality of the execution uh, is uh, way above uh, the Hamas level. So uh, there is no question about that. There is also it looks like there are some internal problems uh, in uh, Israel uh, army, Israel military because. Uh, it's very clear it was caught in complete disarray um, uh, and the losses are very heavy among civilians and uh, in, um, in Israel military. So uh, I would say the losses probably just for the October 7th were probably between 1,000 and uh, 1,500 meaning uh, killed uh, dead people and probably between three to 5,000 wounded. Um, uh, so far they still basically kind of going through all of this and figuring out, but um, the lo losses are pretty heavy. Uh, what is also very interesting is that uh, this Palestinian forces uh, were careful observing what's going on um, on the front line in Ukraine, and they actually learned to use this uh, tactical UAVs to destroy tanks. Uh, this is definitely a feature from uh, this war, Ukrainian war. Uh, how they learn it's another question how they got uh, you know know how how to modify those drones that's another question and that's uh, why i'm saying th this is but this is not the main reason why i think there is uh, uh you know other state actors or actor behind uh, this attack uh, and it does look that this is uh, part of um much larger plan so this is just one sort of domino or just one step in large uh, in much uh, bigger game uh, we'll find out what's going to happen in the coming days or weeks uh, but uh, so far mm, that's the situation and there's no question that uh, Israel military will be able to uh, to sort of recover and uh, you know crush the Palestinian forces there's that there, there's no question about that uh, <clears throat> Uh, the only uh, sort of, uh, and, and in a way, this Palestinian forces were just expendable tool, basically. That's what I'm saying, that they this is all calculated uh, and planned and part of some big, bigger sort of uh, chess game uh, that's um, going on. Uh, now let's uh, move a little bit to Russia, no, actually to Ukraine, but we, I'm going to talk a little bit about Russia. So there's new data on Russian uh, state budget collections and everything, uh, and it's very clearly showing that uh, oil and gas revenues are uh, rebounding mightily, uh, and uh, Russian uh, state budget is basically rejuvenated uh, pretty pretty well. Uh, it's obviously was deprived of resources at the beginning of the year, so they will not do as well for the. Uh, for the year, um, but uh, uh, they will probably generate seven to eight trillion Russian rubles uh, from oil and gas resources, uh, from oil, sorry, from oil gas uh, tax collections, uh, in Russian state budget about I think twenty six or twenty seven trillion uh, Russian rubles for for the year. Uh, so there is, uh, you know, as you can see, then there there some part will be generated by internal economy. And the rest is going to be basically issued uh, by, by based issue, issue in currency. And that's the reason why Russian ruble is declining. Uh, and it will continue to decline. It touched 101, 101 uh, Russian rubles uh, for US dollar uh, on Friday. Uh, then it kind of bounced back to 99. But basically, it's on the pass uh, down. And the reason is simply because uh, Russian uh, government needs to um, needs resources, 
and uh, issuing currency is essentially additional tax uh, on their you know entire economy entire population on the wealth of population uh, and basically this is another way to mobilize resources from the population uh, in terms of uh, where it's like where it stands I just want to compare this uh, revenues uh, is at this level, uh, seven to eight million for the year is going to be definitely below 2022, 2021. However, if uh, let's say we project the uh, sort of run rate for September and August, uh, then uh, the revenues, let's say, if this in, does look like it may continue this whole situation. So in 2024, um, the revenue is probably going to be roughly 9.6 trillion uh, for, for the year and that's actually about 2021 where they were nine and uh, 2022 was uh, really a bumper year it was like 11.6 but that's driven largely also um, by the help from natural gas and as i mentioned before natural gas engine is completely destroyed for russia so it's uh, it, it's just not there. So it's all simply uh, from uh, crude, uh, not all, but let's say 90% of it is from crude oil. Um, so it's just for, you know, for the fact that this is just from the crude oil, it's almost, it's not that far away from 2022 when they had two engines working uh, at the same time. So... Um, again, what this really means, it's more resources for the war. Uh, also, Russian uh, government decided to do um, uh, restart this um, uh, compensation scheme uh, for uh, uh, gasoline and diesel fuel producers. So basically subsidies so that prices inside of Russia for gasoline and diesel fuel are below the international market. They're roughly like plus minus 60 cents per uh, liter of gasoline. Uh, and so they continue sort of fighting this. They they, uh, they basically want to keep these prices low. Uh, and for now, they do have resources. At least, uh, at least they're willing to restart this uh, subsidy scheme and basically uh, pay additional this difference between international prices in internal prices in Russia to oil and get um, to to the refineries uh, which will stabilize uh, uh, situation uh, on the Russian um, uh, gasoline and diesel fuel market for some time as long as obviously they will sort of come through on all of this because that's so far it's obviously declarations that they're gonna restart uh, this uh, scheme and uh, whether they will actually do it or not that's another question we'll find out uh, but so far, uh, this, as you can see, this um, fresh blood, fresh uh, money that's coming from uh, high uh, crude oil prices, uh, they they help to basically shore up all of the problems, or at least keep them uh, contained and keep them from deteriorating much uh, to much worse into much worse situation. Uh, so, looking at this whole situation, if the prices stay where they are. Or plus minus in that range uh, basically Russian state budget and Russian economy will limp along some of it will be helped as, as I said from uh, uh, revenues from crude oil some of it will be helped by basically uh, printing uh, um, uh, unbacked currency uh, but it's not gonna be sort of uh, to the you know as devastating uh, as before so uh, basically this kind of like unhealthy mixture will continue but it's it will allow to uh to continue the war and have resources to continue war for for some time for let's say for long enough um before ukraine uh sort of exhausts itself and expires uh and that's uh you know uh, another part of the calculation strategic calculation in in um uh, uh, in Russia, if this is war of attrition, they want to make sure that uh, economy, financial side is is solid or at least uh, you know uh, strong enough to kind of carry through the through the war. And and so far, it looks like with uh, rejuvenation rejuvenation of uh, crude oil prices, this is going to be possible. It's not going to be perfect, uh, 
uh, there will be a lot of sort of bumps, but uh, it is uh, Russian will Russia will be able to to get uh, sort of to other side uh, of the of the ocean or whatever what to, to, to the other side basically um, now let's uh, switch uh, to uh, situation uh, in Ukraine um, things in Ukraine obviously not great much worse and and, and there is a uh, very clear um, I would say writing on the wall that Ukraine will not going to be able to win this war of attrition this is just uh, very straightforward uh, it gets to the point that uh, uh, in the part in Ukrainian parliament there is new um, or sort of modification of existing laws a law where uh, uh, members of the parliament they want to increase the age uh, mobilization age for the soldiers and uh, uh, officers uh, to 65 uh, uh, to 65 uh, years old which as you can imagine that's Sort of unheard of and it's uh, really uh, kind of tells this that the significant stress and lack of resources uh, in terms of uh, soldiers uh, on the ground uh, and also uh, the age of the most senior officer officers will be increased to 70 years old this is obviously proposal but most likely it's gonna pass um, and again as I said, that's a sign that uh, Ukraine is is getting towards exhaustion po exhaustion point. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow or in a month, but probably sometime in the spring uh, and summer if this war still uh, you know continues and things don't change in terms of uh, armament uh, and in terms of uh, changing approach to the war in, in terms of skills of the. Uh, military commanders or the political top, uh, which they will not looks like, and uh, training um, of the soldiers. Uh, so uh, things are going to be really uh, in bad, uh, uh, in sort of bad situation uh, sometime in the spring and the summer um, of the next year. So this is uh, where Ukraine is heading. Into also uh, Russia uh, continues uh, its. Uh, economic war against ukraine so there there's uh, non-stop attacks against ukrainian port infrastructure i mentioned this before in uh the new delta they continue destroying uh all the um grain silos and, and storage facilities that allow to export grain uh also there are attacks in uh, uh in another in the odessa area there is bunch of ports here one of his Chernomorsk here and not also Odessa so uh, there is um, f uh, there's very clear focus and um, let's say deliberate plan and that's being executed over the time to destroy this uh, infrastructure and uh, to uh, effectively destroy uh, Ukrainian economy and make it much more expensive uh, for the West to support uh, Ukrainian economy uh, and, and that's also part of very of calculated uh, plan and you know war is never just the military action it's always involves economic action uh, and in, in, in some ways economy comes first actually before the war part before the military part because without uh, economy you cannot sustain uh, military uh, now let's uh, switch to the uh, situation on the battleground uh, as a general um, observation, I want to confirm what I said before, is that uh, Russian uh, military command is trying to um, gain initiative. Uh, it's not in their hands yet, but they, they, uh, they definitely are trying to, uh, to capture initiative from, uh, from Ukrainian command. Uh, so far, they're doing a bunch of uh, disorganized uh, tactical squeezes and pushes. Uh, but in many places at the same time uh, they don't produce any results uh, yet um, and m most most likely they will not uh, but they do try and uh, what I said before is the, of, of Ukrainian military command and army that's not able to do true offensive the same is true of the Russian army it's not capable of doing uh, true offensive so it's always degenerates and turns into this 
uh, tactical um, small scale attacks and squeezes and, and so on sort of like typical world war one except really at the tactical level and um, neither side has uh, skills and technical resources to actually uh, penetrate uh, other opposing sides uh, <clears throat> defenses so um, having said that now let's just uh, do a walkthrough I'm gonna do it in a clockwise fashion as I always do situation along the state water remains more or less the same uh, nothing uh, important important or of notice now let's jump to uh, North Luhansk front line um, so this area is uh, part, as I said before, of this um, concentrated pressure by the Russian forces. So it's everywhere, pretty much at every single section of the front line. And uh, North Luhansk is not uh, immune. Uh, so there is uh, Russian attacks here against Makivka. Also, it's not shown on the map, but a little bit north of Kupiansk. There are tactical attacks. It's all... As I said before, it's all tactical attacks. This is not like major offensive, not nothing truly organized to call it offensive, but just, uh, you know, local attacks against the villages. That, that's pretty much it. Was so far without any success. Uh, now let's look at uh, North Donbass front line. Uh, Northern sector actually still uh, quiet. Um, however, uh, the Southern, uh, it's more sort of, um, you know, tactical Russian attacks and then Ukrainian counter attacks or I would say Ukrainian also in, in, in some way you can say it's meeting engagement because uh, Ukrainian forces are still trying to uh, penetrate uh, Russian defenses and basically squeeze Russian troops and to sort of uh, kind of move uh, east and, and south of Bakhmut with this big plan of uh, encircling uh, Bakhmut from north and from south which is I would say mission impossible, uh, but nevertheless, Ukrainian forces trying, uh, and then the Russian uh, forces basically counter attacking at a tactical level. There, uh, neither side is getting anywhere at this time. Uh, now let's look at uh, Central Donbass front line. Uh, things here are also active, as you can see. This uh, Ar Marinka area is is pretty active. Uh, what is more interesting, actually, let's just jump to the Zaporizhia front line. Uh, Russian troops are making a very uh, strong and sort of concentrated uh, effort in this Vuhledar area, basically. So as you can see, it's, there are attacks uh, straight north of Vuhledar, Vuhledar uh, Zlataniva, then this uh, Velika Novosilka or Staromlinivka. Uh, area so in including uh, all the way to pre -Yudna. so there is uh, apparently um, this could be this for some reason viewed uh, as um, area of interest by a uh, Russian uh, military command uh, kind of unclear why uh, uh, because it does seem that it's more than just attempts to um, recapture was ground um, but so far again it's all tactical as i said it's nothing major it's not like truly large offense or anything it's just um uh, a lot of tactical disorganized attacks uh small scale that don't go anywhere but uh they just uh, just a lot of them and and on the wide front and that just uh, draws attention uh and then uh there is um um, sort of mutual uh, back and forth around Robotine. Uh Again, very low scale, uh, you know, like platoon level kind of attacks, completely uh, small, as I said, small scale, nothing major, neither side is getting anywhere. So very similar situation to um, south of Bakhmut, uh, around Klishiv, pretty much more or less the same. Uh, effectively, Ukrainian forces at this point um, on defensive everywhere, they stopped uh, uh, the, even this so-called offensive attempts or this uh, tactical squeezes that they were doing. Um, uh, the plans are unclear at this point. Uh, I would say the plans is there is no, um, as I said before, there, there is no strategic solution uh, for Ukrainian side within this uh, paradigm where. 
Ukrainian army doesn't have exceeding uh, technical advantage over the Russian army. Uh, it doesn't have um, organizational advantage, training and skill advantage. Um, the, the level of the command is not there. So there is no uh, advantage, no, no, nothing to sort of lean against and use as a leverage. So ev everywhere is sort of mediocre, the same as Russian army. Uh, in some instances, it's worse, it's a little bit better, but more or less, it's the same. And so uh, there is no um, effective solution. And I believe that the Ukrainian command is just decided to, to sort of wait out and see where everything goes, which, again, even that is losing uh, proposition for Ukraine because uh, lost time... Um, um, means brings uh, Russia's victory uh, every day brings Russia's victory closer uh, as because simply because as I said it's a war of attrition and if Ukraine loses roughly the same um, number of uh, soldiers or people on, on the ground uh, so it's getting it's gonna get exhausted sooner than Russia so in it in in some ways Ukraine is really in the corner in a very difficult situation because Inaction means defeat eventual as well. Um, so um, now let's move to the last one is uh, along the Dnipro River situation remains the same. Uh, no uh, significant activities here by either side. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye bye.